I think everything is ready to go. So are all the panelists ready to start? Yeah, cool. Awesome. So um, hi, everyone. My name is Juliana, and I am a former Cerritos College student. Um, I went to Whitney High School before that. So that was um, the high school I went to in Cerritos. Um, and I'm currently majoring in international relations and minoring in education at UC Davis. Um, and yeah, I used to go to Cerritos. Um, and today I will be uh, moderating this awesome panel full of current um, Cerritos College students um, for you. So um, I'll give it a minute. I think there's a couple more people waiting um, and then hopefully I can reintroduce myself again because I see the waiting room was popping off for a little bit. So how is everyone doing today? Good. Feel free to give me a thumbs up. Hopefully, hopefully you're having a good Friday. Good Friday. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I feel like that's everyone. So I'll reintroduce myself. Um, but yeah, my name is Juliana. Um, I used to be a former Cerritos College student um, and I'm majoring in international relations and minoring in education at UC Davis, uh, where I transferred to this year. Um, and at UC Davis, I'm also an outreach coordinator um, for a student initiated program. Um, but besides that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and I'll allow all the other panelists to introduce themselves. Um, and then we can start asking them awesome questions about their experience at Cerritos College. So I can go next. Or did you have a list? No, you can go for it. Okay, okay cool. Hi, everyone. Um, I think I should show my camera. It's kind of weird to not show your, your face. <laughs> there you go. Um, my name is Cesar Ortiz, and I, I'm a graduate of Walnut High School. That's class of 2007, which it's been a while for me to even say that. <laughs> um, currently, I am a student at Cerritos College, and my major is in elementary education. And today, I'm here representing the LGBTQ um community <laughs> of cerritos college so uh that's it right those were the questions okay perfect okay perfect anyone else want to go next i go next uh, my name is Janine maldonado i also graduated in 2007 so it's been a while um i actually graduated from la puente high school um and then i went to cal state long beach and graduated there in 2012 so i went back to school at cerritos to get my paralegal certificate um they have a really good aba approved program so uh this is actually my last semester there awesome who wants to go next i can go <laughs> good morning everyone my name is raul leon i am um a geography slash global studies uh, major. My my roles, I have a lot. So I'll just tell you the, the top one. So I am the director of the Interclub Council for the AECC. And I am also the, the president of the Geography Club. And I'm currently leading campaign to remove plastics on campus. So for all of y'all who are interested in like this movement, you know, I'm here. Also, I graduated uh, class of 2019 from Bell Gardens High School. Um, I'll go next. Hi, my name is Noma and um, I graduated uh, 2020, so last year from Los Alamitos High School. And um, I'm a nursing major at Cerritos. This is my, my first year. And so I'm about to finish it up in a couple more weeks. And then, um, I'm in the Moja program, which is a program that's based around um, black and brown community and basically all the movements. And we talk about big issue topics like Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. And um, we just help in the community. And yeah, that's me. Okay, I'll go next. Hi, everybody. My name is Jeremy Ramos. I am the class of 2018. I went to Langwood High School and my current um, 
April. I have in, I'm in a lot of activities as well, but I'll go the major ones. I am one of the student senators. I am in Cerritos College and also as well um, being in um, the vice president of the geography club, um, as well as um, that's it. <laughs> There's so many things, so I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> so happy to be here. Uh, I could go next. Um, my name is Martel Hernandez. It's not Maria Reynoso. I don't know who that is. Um, I'm here to represent Puente. And I started college, Cerritos College around 2015. And I'm going to, this was my last semester. So I should transfer. I should start at, at a four-year institution this year. For those, all the panelists, I want to say that that was. All right. So I'm assuming that was everyone because there are quite a lot of panelists, but it's awesome to hear about everything you guys are involved with and all your future plans. Um, and I think that's exciting for future students to see. So that, to start off, um, I just want to ask you all, what's the best thing you like about going to college that is much different from high school? Um, and if you guys want, I can start with somebody just to kind of keep the flow going. Um, so maybe I'll start with Nyoma because she is a recent high school graduate. So what are some differences you've noticed between high school and college? Um, one of the major differences, is like I can take my own classes. Um, I know in high school, yes, you can pick your one through six classes, but I can have online or remote. So remote is, if you don't know, it's like um, basically like this. So you have to be on class at 9 a.m. till about 10 p.m. or 10 a.m., sorry. So um, that's remote and you have to like engage. But online classes is where um, the teacher professor gives you all the lessons and then you can do it at any time you want to and it's due at a certain date. So I like those classes more and um, I can do it whenever I want to when I'm free. So I feel like that's really the biggest difference from high school. Perfect, definitely felt that. Yeah, and I've been out of high school for a little bit um, so yeah, you definitely have a lot of freedom with your schedule. Um, anybody else want to take a shot at this question? Um, go over some differences between their high school experience and their current college experience. I'll start. Um, I think I'm a student panel, but I don't know why it's showing as my name as Maria Reynoso. I don't know why it's showing that. Which, um, but I'll definitely rename you. And if you want, you can introduce yourself too, because that's probably why I missed you. Okay, um, so I'm Yesenia. Um, my, my major is um, medical assistant. I actually graduate this month as MMA. Um, I am planning to keep on going to school for my associates and hopefully transfer, that's the goal. And I am representing Undoc Alley. Perfect. And did you want to answer about um, maybe why high school for you or, or how high school and college have differed for you? Um, I think college is a little bit more like freedom in a way, as in like you could manage your own time. And in school, you would have to wake up from A and B at school from that whole until you're out until two or three sometimes. Um, and then right here in college is different because you have a little bit more freedom. You could, you know, Pick your classes, the days that you want to have classes, and then you could even have a day off, but just focus on yourself. I think that's like the difference. And there's more help in college than there is in high school. Awesome, I love that answer. Um, anybody else want to take a go or do you want to move on to the next question? I can go. Perfect. So I, I like that, as you said, that there's more resources than when we were in high school, and that is true. Cerritos College has a lot of resources for those who are transferring to for your institution or you know whatever your goal is. Cerritos has some great resources for you, and you know make sure to take advantage of those. You know so, some of the resources that, that I wasn't aware of is that you know there's this program called Tag or Tap, where you sign up to that program and you get um, what is it? 
you get acceptance at university, you get a um, quick acceptance to, um, I think there's a list of certain universities, but you don't have to worry about getting accepted or not, since you'll automatically be accepted with that program. Um, so yeah, I just think that there's so many great resources and great scholarships. Also to let you guys know that there is a scholarship that has already um, finished, but um, that scholarship is for transfers and that scholarship is to pay all your dorming. Uh, so, you know, there's some great resources for all of y'all who are hoping to go to Cerritos or any, um, you know, community college. So just letting you guys know, stay aware. Perfect, perfect. I agree. There's definitely a lot more and like varying resources at college than maybe in high school, um, which is great because you get to explore a lot of different options that you probably never would have considered. Um, I think those were really great answers for this question. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next one. So why did you choose to attend Cerritos College? I can go for that one. Um, I chose to Cerritos College because of the major I'm in, which is elementary education, and they have a thing called teacher track. And teacher track is for anyone that is a major in elementary or education, and they provide scholarships, future, they provide teacher workshops, professional training, teaching conferences, uh, transfer assistance, and paid mentor, mentoring, sorry, paid internships and mentoring. And overall, it's just a really good program for anyone who's interested in becoming a teacher and or that and is not sure if um, this is the path for them. So that's kind of where I'm at. Like, yes, this is kind of where I want to be, but I'm not sure. So right now there's no conferences or workshops because of the whole COVID thing. But as soon as, as, soon as there are, I'm looking forward to um, doing more research in that domain. So um, because of the teacher track program, that's why I chose Cerritos College. Perfect. And teacher track is such a great program. Um, just to plug it in, like it prepares you so well to be a teacher. So that's such an exciting um, option to choose from. Anybody else want to answer maybe why they chose Cerritos College? Um, so I'll go next. I chose Cerritos because um, they have an ABA approved paralegal program. So ABA is the American Bar Association, which is like the highest, most prestigious thing you could have. Um, a lot of lawyers, when they go to school, they go to a school that's ABA approved um, because it just adds points to your resume. So a paralegal is like a legal assistant. So you're basically helping an attorney. Um, so being an ABA school, approved school holds a lot of influence and it'll open more doors um, as far as job opportunities. And you get better training too, I feel. Yes, also very important to make sure that the programs you are considering are all approved and like certificated um, or else, yeah, it just doesn't hold as much merit. Um, so that's awesome that that's a reason why you chose Cerritos College. Any other um, panelists want to share their input? We can. Yes. Go for it. <clears throat> I'm sorry for cutting you off. Um, so some of y'all might be like in the position that I was before. You know, um, I felt like I couldn't choose my career path with it in, you know, in high school. I just felt like I needed to explore more classes, explore, explore more fields, even though I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I felt like Cerritos College had that, or a community college had that ability for me to um, experiment with different majors and different fields with a low cost. Uh, um, you know, some colleges cost a lot and I feel like Cerritos College does give you that opportunity. And I feel like that's why we have those general ed classes that we get to, so we can, um, explore different, you know, fields of, um, you know, different majors and see different perspectives, you know, taking those classes allows you to see if this is something you want to do for the rest of your life. And, you know, I, I honestly, that first semester at, at Cerritos, I was able to see myself in the next 10 years. And I felt like this major in this field was that field for me. So I feel like Cerritos College and, you know, transferring to a two year when you have no idea what to do with your life. It's a great, you know, opportunity for you or a great um, chance for you to see what you could be doing. Awesome. Those are amazing answers. Um, and I think I'll go ahead and segue into the next question. So what is your major and what do you like about it? I can go for this one. I don't think I've mentioned it. <laughs> so I'm actually a double major in 
communication studies and in um, elementary teaching. Um, so I really like this major because um, I did had some um, experience during in my high school where one of my classes actually um, one of my teachers I told informed us, us the group that we were going to teach a, a group of students in the classroom uh, totally in Spanish so it was different different language so it was a lot of preparing uh, lesson plan involved and as I prepare myself that it was time to go into the classroom and um, the students were really excited. So I was more excited <laughs> to see them. And throughout the lesson, everyone was, was engaging and asking questions when they needed to. So it was a, a lot and something new for me, um, being involved um, with a different campus. So with that, it has helped me decide in my major as elementary teaching. And uh, this helped me with um, the program here at Teacher Track. Uh, it helps me get more opportunities as I want to be a future teacher and make a great community for other students as well. That's an awesome answer. And I'm glad you got that exposure very early on in high school. Um, to kind of prepare you for that field. Did anyone maybe have a major and like you stumbled upon it maybe after changing it a couple of times, maybe not having like that same exposure? And what was that like as well? Yeah, I had an experience like that. I was a, uh, well, when I started community college, I didn't really have a major. I was just taking general ed classes. And then I took a music elective class that I really liked. And so I decided to major in that. So I studied music for about two years, but then I kind of didn't know what, what to do with that major in the future. So I switched to business, to business administration. And now I'm gonna get an, an AA on business administration and hopefully uh, get a bachelor's in economics, just cause it's more uh, something I could use just everywhere. It's not just strictly limited to like certain areas. And hopefully I can uh, mix that with my music, like a music business or whatever I, I could come up with. And I just just chose that major, yeah, just cause it's, um, cause hopefully it's not gonna, there's this whole stereotype of like musicians are like the starving musician. And that's kind of something you kind of want to avoid. So in, you're paying a lot of money to get these uh, degrees. So you kind of want to, and it's like an investment, you want to get it the money back in the future somehow and so it was it took me about five years to realize that around four or five years but now i kind of since it's community college you don't feel that much pressure to to just get it done with or to get out of there quick you kind of could take your time and make sure that whatever you're majoring in is something you're like actually passionate about and are like secure about i like that answer a lot has like you're combining a lot of your interests into one and also um you have like your path that you took to like find out what you were passionate about um anybody else want to tackle that same question what is your major what do you like about it what were some of the experiences leading up to discovering your program i'll go next um i got skipped for the second one i don't know if you want me to answer it um uh, second question up to you if you want to answer it Okay, well, I, attend, I attended to Cerritos College. Why well, chose Cerritos? Because first of all, it's a beautiful campus. And when I went there, I remember they were having that like little resources when they put little like program stands. And I went not knowing anything. And when I decided that I was gonna enroll to it, I didn't feel lost. Like everybody was so attentive like to your needs and what you needed. And they, like I said, they have a lot of resources that everybody should take advantage of. And I'll just make it short. And then for my second one, for my major, what I like about it, like I said, I'm in the MA, that I get to help people. I really like helping people. I like being there for people and, and kind of like knowing like the medical field, how it works and, you know, no, seeing all the, those stuff that people go through and being there for them. I really like that about my career. Awesome. Yeah, definitely medical assisting, super underrated. You all are considering the program. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. 
Um, do you have a story about a funny or positive experience you've had at Cerritos College? I don't know if anyone wants to go first. Yes, I have one. Um, you know, I feel like this is common and, you know, I feel embarrassed by this. But my first class, I went into the wrong classroom and I sat there and I was like, wait, this is not the class. And it turns out that the class was next to that, that class. And I was like freaking out. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, it's a common thing. It's a new campus. You have no idea where to go. Um, but yeah, that was my funny story. Love it. That's definitely very common. I've done that a couple of times, even after I got used to the campus. <laughs> awesome. Anybody else have any funny stories, any positive experiences? Um, I've actually never been to Cerritos physically. Um, I just started in the summer of last year and we they had already switched to remote. So I literally completed my program all remotely. So I never got to go to campus. I only went once to meet with the advisor. So if I really had to go to class, I wouldn't even know where to go because I don't go to campus at all. It's all good. Yeah, I'm currently a student at UC Davis and I feel that I'm at home and I haven't stepped foot on UC Davis's campus. And when people ask me, I'm like, what? <laughs> um, but hopefully that's not the same experience um, our entering um, new like class freshmen, first year students have. Um, yeah, so hoping you, you all get to experience it at some point because um, it is a really amazing campus to be a part of. Um, any other funny or positive experiences? We could also talk about, move on to student services or co-curricular activities you all are very passionate about being a part of. Um, and maybe you can highlight some of those programs you have participated in during your time at Cerritos. Uh, I could uh, say that uh, Puente gave me a lot of memories, a lot of good experiences. Um, we usually do this trip uh, to, up north that uh, takes us to like different universities. I think the one we went to took us to UC Merced, uh, to Cal uh, East Bay and San Jose State. But it was just being, uh, it was super fun just being with uh, your friends in Puente, that community and just exploring different uh, campuses, just doing things out of the norm. And I, I think those that North Cal trip is available to anybody. So it's not just Puente. So you get to meet other people. And then um, I think there was another cool experience that was just last year. It was a leadership retreat. It was by student services. And that was really fun because it's just, uh, it was uh, like this three day uh, experience where we went to uh, Lake Arrowhead. And we really got to know each other. We got to um, do activities that kind of just encourage leadership. And so Cerritos College has a lot of those uh, types of trips where um, they try to like uh, uh, give you different experiences that kind of throw you in different situations or uh, get you out of your comfort zone. Yeah, I like that answer. Definitely remember a lot of opportunities like that that made it feel a little less like a commuter campus where you just went to campus and then came home. So anybody else have any other programs that they've participated in um, that they would like to share more about? Yes. So I got three. So I don't know how much time I have for this, but I got, you know, there's a lot of hidden gems at Cerritos. One, I'm going to talk about something I had no idea until one of my friends told me, um, why aren't you in this program? It's called EOPS. If you get FAFSA, there's a chance that you might be into EOPS or, you know, just apply. Um, EOPS is an extra program with great counselors and great resources on campus. Um, you know, they have great opportunities. So there's always one-on-one -on -one with counselors. They're really trained professionals. So they're really great. Um, you know, they're really patient as well. You know, I would always ask the same questions like every time I went in. So they were really patient with me. Um, you know, they made it, they made it for a uh, two-year plan with me and I'm going to finish that two-year plan. Um, you know, they have resources like um, fee waivers. They pay for your trips. They pay for your cap and gown if you're graduating. Um, they also have, or they pay uh, or they give you, they provide you with pens, uh, pencils, uh, scantrons, blue books, uh, green books, and you know, the other books. Another great thing is that they have their own books, like certain uh, um, general books that, you know, most people have to get. They have those books for you to rent out and they'll give you, um, to give you the chance to rent that book for the semester. They also have the T something calculators, you know, for those math people. Um, so that's a great resources. 
resource, another hidden gem is the transfer, no, yeah, the transfer center. The transfer center has great opportunities. Um, they also have counselors there. So if you have any questions about transferring, feel free to go to those. They always gonna um, give you the best resources that they have since they do work close with these other universities that some of you might hope to transfer. And then the last one, it's kind of makes, uh, they, they, they come to the bundle. Um, it's the ACC, the student government at our campus. There are three branches, court, senate, and cabinet. Um, you know, there's a spot for any of you, you know, whatever your major is, there's a spot for you. Um, feel free to join. Like, it's not a, you know, it's not a group that we, it's only us, you know, we work for our students, we work for everybody, we make sure that these opportunities are out there for everyone. Um, you know, that's why I talk about it so much, because I think that people should be involved to learn more about our campus and see how what we do on the working side. And within this group, I worked on the constitution for our school. I worked with uh, for a budget for our school. I worked on different plans that, you know, well, I'm so excited to share with you, but I can't, you know, so there's so many excited events that we're working on and, you know, um, and those are things that we do as part of the cabinet, you know, it's exciting. And another thing that comes with it uh, as a director of ICC, I work with, you know, all the clubs on campus, so I know how that works. And um, our advisor, AJ, she is great for those students who are here. Uh, you guys are going to see at the next panel. She's a great resource, and she has this um, leadership class. It's called The Fly, and it's one of the greatest classes. You know, me, I'm involved in all these, you know, things, but this semester I started as being a president of the club. I have never been a president of a club, and you know, in that class, she teaches you about, you know, the different perspectives of leadership and how to be a better leader. And I feel like I have grown within, you know, this last semester with, you know, reading that book that she provided and seeing, you know, the different ways of becoming a leader. So there are great resources out there. Um, so make sure to take advantage of that. Awesome answer. Lots of student involvement. We love to see it. Definitely get involved on campus. I think, Yesenia, did you want to say something too? Yeah, I'll go next. Um, so like he mentioned the EOPS program, I barely joined so but so far so good. Um, a great opportunities with that program. Um, we're also planning to open back the dream club. Um, before I would do so much good stuff. So I'm hopefully we get it back running this semester. And some stuff that I've been like, active on is like being a student panel for on Doc Alley. It's beautiful, you know, just sharing your story to others, um, having them not feel scared. Um, like he said, definitely get involved because that's like what makes you fearful, like not like to be scared. Um, and that's what has changed my experience at Cerritos College, definitely. Awesome. I love to see it. Yeah, definitely getting involved helps improve your experience on campus, even yeah. if you're on Zoom, like distant <laughs> from each other. Uh, yeah. And that'll segue actually really nicely to my next question. What advice can you share that can lead to successful online and remote learning? And maybe I'll turn this over to Janine, just because you mentioned um, you maybe your only experience was online learning. So how did you pick that up like so quickly? Um, well, I had a, never even taken an online course. So it was really different. Um, I just think you have to have a lot of self-discipline. Um, you know, it's easy to slack off and maybe not go to class or not do your work, but um, just, you know, I kind of act like I still go to class, like I get ready for class before class and I have all my stuff ready um, when I have to meet with the teachers um, and still do, you know, the homework, read the material before going to class. Um, teachers still call on you uh, to make sure that you're participating. So don't think that because it's online, it's going to be uh, easier. I feel like it's a little bit harder um, in a way just because you're not there in person. Um, and I would still say go to office hours. Those are really important, uh, whether you're on campus or not, but office hours are very, very, very helpful um, when you don't understand something. You get like a one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. So I feel like it really, really helps um, going to those. Awesome, yeah. And I definitely wanna echo that first piece of advice you give, like just getting ready. I think getting out of your PJs definitely helps making sure you're attentive to your classes because otherwise your first instinct is just to curl up in bed. Um, at least that's for me. So I try to have a morning routine to make sure I get started. Um, and maybe like um, Cesar, if you could um, also add on, um, especially yeah. in elementary education, like how to- um, 
I'm actually the same as Janine. <laughs> uh, I started last year again. Uh, as far as the uh, online, um, it was very new to me. Um, so that can be challenging. I think it requires a lot of discipline to, because all the information is already in front of you. So you really have to manage your own schedule and you can easily, you know, with, with everything in front of you, you can easily just slack off. So I think it just requires a lot of patience with yourself and having discipline because you are learning on a computer. So you have to kind of know how to manage that. And um, for me, it just took a lot of patience and uh, I can be an overthinker sometimes. So I get really like in my head and uh, but especially with like technical stuff. So I just needed to just um, be patient and um, read the syllabus is always helpful. The professors really, um, they like exhaust the conversation of like reading the syllabus and it really actually makes a difference, especially for online. And as far as the teacher track, I haven't been able to really do much with that because um, we're, you know, we're virtual, um, but I am still in communication with like the child development professors and um, just, uh, I actually took a child development class virtual this last semester, I mean, last semester, um, which was really enjoyable. Um, but it was, it would have been different in class, uh, the professor said, but um, it's still, it was still rewarding. And I learned the material that I needed to learn uh, virtually. So um, yeah, I think the important thing is just to like have discipline and patience with yourself, especially in the online format. I like that. Definitely having patience with yourself is important because we're all on different learning curves. Um, and then this last question before we open it up for questions from the audience, what advice do you have for new students? Maybe I'll, um, headed over to Noma since it was her first year at Cerritos. Um, I don't know if you have, what have, have you learned this first year and what do you, wisdom do you want to impart on students? Um, I would say stay organized. It's, it's really, it's going to help you a lot. And um, I did, when people told me to make a calendar, I didn't want to do that. It's like, I got it all in my head and like, I kind of fell behind a little bit, but like making a calendar and setting your schedule really helps out. Yes, it is tedious, but it can really help you in your future because um, you know you do want to have good grades and then stay in contact with like your teacher just emailing them like um, can really be helpful because they usually answer within like a couple of hours or a couple of days but that's really helpful and make uh, make some friends with your um, classmates I know it's going to be kind of awkward because you're online and you don't know how they look like but um, there's an app called Pronto. It's like really helpful. And this make friends is going to be so helpful because they can help you with homework and you can help them have study groups. So just like stay connected and like try different things out. There's we have like so many classes, so many clubs, so many programs to help you guys out. And just you just have to like look for it. It's really easy, but you just have to just take the step and look for it. It's going to be really beneficial for you. Awesome. And then I can open it up. Any else, anybody else want to give advice to um, the students here today? I'll share. Um, definitely um, um, be involved in different activities because there's a lot of opportunities for us to gain our leadership skills, as well as don't be shy to uh, make friends. Like despite being in this virtual world, don't be shy as um, you're not the only ones um, suffering. Like, you know, most students want to go back to campus. so. Don't be shy to contact other students, whether it's like a class that's so difficult. Don't be shy because maybe everyone is struggling. So make a study group uh, if you want as, most, as much as possible with many students um, in the class and as well as um, being um, organized. Because I know for myself, like coming um, first year, um, I was really unorganized planning different times, like coming in daytime and nighttime. So definitely now as years go by, it's definitely improved my schedule way. So um, don't be um, nervous as there's many counselors and many opportunities so that can help you be more organized throughout the semester, so. Beautiful, that was a great answer as well. Anybody else wanna impart some advice? Um, before we move on to questions from students? Yes, so <clears throat> this is an advice for everybody, even the people on the same panel as me. You know, I learned this, you know, last week, or I didn't learn it, I just, you know, it just blew my mind how simple and how, you know, enlightening it is. You know, whatever thing or anything that you're working on or anything you're starting on, you know, it might seem far, you know, you're, the end point might seem far, 
But start, it doesn't matter where you start. You just start with something. You just got to start it, you know. It might be so hard to, you know, I'm currently working on policies and, you know, getting our campus to break from uh, break from plastic. And it may seem hard and tedious, but we just got to start somewhere. We just got to start these conversations. Also, you know, you know, it might seem, you know, I'm working and I'm doing all these things and I want to get my, my bachelor's. You know, this is your start. You can start here. And I feel like there are so many resources and even us, we can help you. If you have any questions, you guys can always email me. You know, I'll share any resources that I have. I think that, you know, high school is great and all, but not, they don't always share all that information with you. There's so many scholarships that I wish I had that same opportunity as those other classmates that took advantage of those because I wasn't aware of those. So and this is why we are here to share those things that we have learned that no one else told us. And, you know, same thing goes, you know, just search somewhere and ask your, ask questions, you know, this spot is for you to ask your questions and, you know, you know, information or asking questions does not hurt because it just makes you stronger. It makes you build that knowledge that you did not have before. So, yeah. For sure. And it's like what the transfer center says, start here, go anywhere. I still remember it from my time there. So definitely just start on your journey um, and you never know where it'll take you. And I do have one question in the chat. So how important are planners for students who are starting online? So what do you guys think? I think it's important because if you want to do it all in your head, like Noemi said, it's not going to work. <laughs> and I would do the same thing. I would try to plan it all in my head and it doesn't work. <laughs> and some of us are really good at doing that. And I considered myself good at that. But in the online format, it just it just helps to write it down and just um, plan it out. Yeah. Yeah, to go off that, there's like, three, you might have like five, four, three different classes, but like there's different due dates for everything. And then there's like time schedules, like some are due at 8.59, some are due at 11.59. And so like, um, it can all just get mixed up. And like, um, so having a schedule and planning out your week or your month and like when all the major due dates are, are very important because some professors can give you leeway when you miss something or some will be like, no, this is the due date and there's no ifs, ands, or buts and you're gonna get a zero. So it's very important to stay on track and um, so it can help you in the future. I was just say one more thing about that. Um, for the most part, I've noticed like some professors are like, okay, if you're like a day late, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, I've had turned in assignments a few times late, especially with this whole COVID. I've been like, so like, you know, it's been uncomfortable. So um, I forget, you know, the forgetfulness. And so I'm like, oh my God, professor, I emailed them right away. Can I turn this in? And they're like, yeah, don't worry. Like, I think the important part is they know that you stay in communication with them. You don't like disappear, right? So as long as they feel like you're in communication and you're still like involved, like they'll work with you also. Yes, and to add to that real quickly, um, yeah, have a planner. So there's great planners online that you can use. Um, it's useful for me because I'm busy and I, I, you know, for some reason it always happens to me, I double book myself. So I'm at two Zoom meetings at the same time. So I have my computer and my phone and you know, there's some chances where I have three meetings at the same time. So don't be like me, um, you know, book your, have a calendar and book your meetings at different times. Give yourself, give yourself some time to rest as well. Yes, that rest time during online learning is important. It's actually really draining, despite what people may think. Um, and do you guys have a preference about like how you organize your stuff? Um, I know for myself, like I just got into Google Calendar because I'm just not tech savvy at all. I used to love like paper and pencil. So I'm curious to see like what the breakdown is among this group of panelists. What I tend to do is I just put the due date of the assignment, the class due date, and I just save it on my uh, calendar on my phone and I put an alert and I just do that. I'm like, and it has a bunch, I just get, get alerted. I don't get alerted like the day of, I get it. I set the alert like two days before or a day before. So I give myself time. That's my uh, system. I yeah, actually just, just wrote yesterday, like on a piece of paper, all my upcoming assignments that are due. And so I'm a visual, so I keep it inside my laptop. So when I open my laptop, I can see what I have coming up. So I actually have a bunch of assignments that are due coming up, but that's what helps me. I'm more like a visual, I have to see it. And so I can get reminded every time. 
Yes, that happens to me. Um, you know, I'm a visual person too. Like I do have my Google calendars, like Juliana said, and it, that's me you know like 10, 30 minutes before the meeting. That's the only reason I know I have a meeting. <laughs> but um, you know, sometimes when I don't have that, I do wake up every morning and have a set calendar of what to do. Um, you can't really see my laptop right now, but I have like post-it notes all over my laptop letting me know I have meetings at this time. But you know, whatever works for you, you know, I think Google Calendars is a great thing. That it has a reminder to let you know when your next meeting is, and it's you know, it's it's up to you. Awesome. Oh, go ahead, you said. Okay. Um, just to add to that, like they said, um, I got this little panel from Marshalls, and I just write what I ever have to do that week. Um, I tend to look at my Canvas a lot. Like, for example, if I'm at an internship and I have free time, I like to go to Canvas and see like the assignments that I have due that week. And I like to start working on them. But for the most part, I try to write everything down. Like um, they said, it's more visual than memorizing it in your head. Awesome. I love the different systems we all use. I think it's really awesome. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm trying the different systems too. Um, like I definitely tried the online bit, but I just don't like it. Um, and some of you guys may try writing it down and then you lose it. So you prefer the online one. So definitely figuring that out as you start your semester is really um, advisable. Um, I don't see any other questions so far for panelists. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself. We have about like a minute or two left before we close. I have a question for you. Go for it. Um, how is it like transferring like to UC Davis? Like what advice can you give us? Oh, wow. Um, well, I think what's really awesome about transferring is we all have like really different experiences. So definitely just my experience is definitely gonna be a lot different than all of yours because it was really weird transitioning in the middle of a pandemic online. Um, and honestly, like at times I just felt like, like, like why am I here? Um, and I started questioning myself a lot that first quarter um, because it just felt so difficult at times. But I think um, I think that's the beauty of being a transfer student or just being a community college student in general, even if you don't plan on transferring. Um, I think we have a lot of grit. Um, a lot of us are like first gen, low income, um, students of color. Like we come from all these walks of life um, and we've learned how to like navigate this system really fast. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I really love the campus. I think Davis is so transfer friendly um, and I've really enjoyed my experience so far. And for the most part, like most students are so welcoming. Um, and actually like last night we got our bill passed to have a transfer student representative on student gov um, and everyone unanimous, unanimously said like, yeah, we agree. So I think that's really indicative of like how welcome mm -hmm. Davis is as a transfer campus. How nice. Yeah, I'm asking because I, I hope to transfer and it's just a little scary because I have nobody like around me that has transferred. So that's why I'm asking. Thank you for your advice. For sure. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> I don't know like that many people at Davis, so I'm definitely just like chilling in my online bubble. <laughs> um, and then um, I see a question about labs. Um, I can just wrap it up really quick or taking it in person or all online. I'm not sure if anyone has an update on that. I know they're updating up stuff for like the about, fall. About labs? Yeah. Um, so I'm, since I'm nursing, I do have labs for like anatomy and physiology. And, um, I'm, and I'm in Ken also, we do have a lab for that. But um, right now we're online, but we I have been getting emails about there's a possibility of like um, some classes, mainly like labs going in person. So um, I just talked to my um, anatomy teacher and she said, um, she was like giving us, ask our opinions, you guys want in person, online. So there's a possibility that we are going in. Um, I think it's looking very highly because online lab is not the same like in person. I've never been in person, but I feel like, um, I know it's really helpful if you like touch something, like touch a model of a heart or like dissect something or like work with other people. So um, I think we're gonna go back hopefully in, in a year or two. Um, and I think I'll wrap it up here. I know we went a little bit over just to give people the opportunity to go to other panels, but thank you all so much for participating on the panel. Thank you for everyone that came. Um, and yeah, feel free to like check out our other resources here at Cerritos College. And I hope you decide to come here in the fall. <laughs>